possible legal expense that we've had that we could incur that we had to incur to get there. At this point, and we've heard everybody won't be heard. We are now in a public Mr. Dan, you've you spoken twice beyond where we were, so we're going to public participation. Can I address the subject that left the We're going to public participation. <laughs> Our first speaker is Mr. Ed Yates. <coughs> Mr. Yates, as you come to the microphone, are you here, Mr. Yates? You come to the microphone, I'll tell you that this board welcomes and encourages public participation. We want to be voted out. Every day to public participation. We were stating that this is due to the for the seniors and the forum provided in board policy at DEDH, public participation meetings. We ask you to sign up, which you've done, and you'll have three minutes for comments. We'll be limited. If you have questions beyond your time, we're going to give those to Mr. <coughs> Price. We'll do our best to give you your time to answer that. In my life. Comments, questions, and opinions are appreciated that should be presented in a matter of place respect and dignity expected by our community. Personal tax on members of the community or any member of this board or staff and school system will not be allowed. With that, I'll ask you to address the board and to uh, make your comments. Thank you, Mr. Gann. Because of the decision you're preparing to make, I'd ask that you first address four important issues. <coughs> Thank you for allowing me to read this letter from the group concerned citizens. First, despite the fact that the people were promised Chapin High School would be expanded. It is widely known that the plan has been cut back. Chapin now is going to be a quote, unquote, renovated but not expanded school. Many people believe the reason Chapin High is not being expanded is because increasing the number of classrooms to what was promised would provide abundant classroom space and new schools would not then be needed. <coughs> Excuse me. One member of the school board has tried to have this matter discussed in public. She has been detailed on how the Chapin plan won't expand the school. On two occasions, she has tried to have this documentation included in the board meeting minutes, which is the prerogative of any school board member. So the public can see the expansion promised is not what Chapin is getting. But the board officers have refused to allow these documents, which clearly show this, into the minutes. Before you take the vote, please state why her documents have not been included in the meeting minutes or even discussed in public. Secondly, please don't vote on this cutback plan before the public review and until her documents are permitted to be discussed at a public board meeting. Also, the board is on track to award a Chinese construction company a $43 million contract for Chapin High School tonight. But what's puzzling is that this bid is $13 million more than the estimate given to the contractors just one month ago at the district's previous grid pre-bid meeting. I know this because I was at the pre-bid meeting. In fact, according to the pre-bid minutes, contractors were told the current estimate for the ex uh, expenditures at Chapin High School would be in the range of 30 to $32 million. Yeah, but lower responsive bids would definitely be reviewed. How can District 5 be 44% off their estimate in just a matter of a few weeks? Also, citizens have been repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly asking about a check written by District 5 for nearly $600,000 for the wetlands mitigation issue. <clears throat> Though the check was returned and the new check was issued, the district has suggested it, that it was meaningless. The district has also said that there is not a wetlands issue. Mr. Yates, will you wrap up? That was your time. Yes, I just had five more lines. Then why is there a $600,000 wetlands check? The district has violated the Freedom of Information Act by refusing my request for information about this check. I personally sent the request in on October 3rd. Under the law, the board has 15 <coughs> business days to respond to my request. Yet six days later, you have refused to answer my request. 
Are there wetlands at this location or aren't there? This wetlands issue is an important one, an important one. So is the issue of Chapin High School not being expanded. And Mr. It's Yates, I'm going to ask you to have a seat. We've heard if you want to submit it, that's your yeah. welcome. Thank you for your input. I hope you'll stick around because a lot of what you said I've resisted is totally erroneous about a cutback on the size and that we won't be voting on a cutback scale of what's going to go on. The wetlands change $600,000 in another erroneous area, but we are now going to our second speaker, who is Ms. Susan Baker. That are putting our own people to work. Good evening, board members, Dr. Hefner, staff, and fellow citizens. As the SIC chair for Chapin High School over the past two years, I wish to give a reflection on some of my experiences um, in the hopes of giving an ongoing picture of, of how to do harm. How do I hate you? Let me count the ways. I filed numerous appeals to agencies and courts to support the board, the staff, and the will of the community. I contact newspapers and youth citizens to agitate and spread half-truths. I personally try to disrupt and cause disagreement amongst the board and citizenry. I publicly call out our school administrative officers as liars. I approach citizens and landowners to give out false information. I make assumptions and I don't check my facts. I file a motion to get a stay on Chapin High School for a sewer line. I don't work with other members in any constructive fashion. I contact media to start rumors of removing the Pledge of Allegiance or stopping the scouting program inside of the schools. I force delays at every turn, and I use every legal means possible. I spend all of my time and efforts to create conflict and hardship. I challenge every document and every goal of the board. I promote distrust and disbelief within the community. I want everyone to believe I'm right at all costs. Chairman, I don't care how long, how much money it takes for my agenda. For I trust hate. nobody but myself, That's and I wrong. attack if I disagree. These kind of actions are destructive, and they're in opposition to the oath of the office taken, the opportunity to be a part of a district that's top in the state, and to share in its future. Uh, we have such an opportunity to be positive and have a positive sense of goodwill. This is simply not there. No one is enjoying this kind of Hatfield-McCoy type of beauty. It's expensive, unnecessary, it hurts us all in the long run. We have children to teach, citizens to develop, and a future that's ours for the sake of our district and our community. I pray that these hurtful actions and maneuvers would stop. One would think, am I for us or against us? My second point regards the financial affairs. Last month, Dr. Fulmer gave us a guide to analyze our new transparent checkbook online. I think it's imperative to point out that he's experienced, he's full of integrity, and he is ready to answer our questions. It's hurtful to say that he's dishonest or untrustworthy. Key points. We've had a full audit done by our outside, very large accounting firm of Derek Stubbs and Stiff. They look over our financial record keeping. They audit many thousands of transactions in the different accounts at our different schools, the review of staff and the practices they do. Did we not obtain the highest rating for bond purposes? Wasn't it the top? Are we not one of the top schools in the state that managed to survive this terrible economic downturn and we're still in shape? So we have experience, we have professionalism, let's keep them going, let's give them thanks for what they do this Thanksgiving, let's thank them for all that they're doing to help us, and please vote yes on Chicken High School. Thank you. Here from Mr. Mark Teal, who is our third 